In this tutorial, we will learn how to navigate around our Canvas home page and we will look at the syllabus. Okay, so I'm not going to go over this word for word because we'll be here for a long time. Uh, so please, after I'm done with this uh, tutorial, please take the time and go over this word for word and read the syllabus word for word. Maybe even a couple of times so you know what's going on in the class. Okay. Okay, this is our home page. Uh, we are History 101. I only put M there for, for my own purposes. I have uh, I have 101 at, at another campus at Palomar College, and that's a different class than this. It's, it's American History at Palomar. So I put the M there to remind me it's modern world history. That's kind of just for me. Uh, 76625 is our class record number, CRM. FT-2, uh, does it mean Frank Turner? It means fast track. Uh, Fast Track 2, second, second session of the Fall 21 uh, semester. Uh, History 101 is online. My name is Frank Turner. Uh, that's the link to the syllabus right there. Okay, so anytime throughout the course, if you need the syllabus for whatever reason, just come to the home page. There it is. Uh, and I'm going to go over the syllabus uh, here after I get done with this home page. Fully online uh, course, also fast track, a 16-week course condensed into eight weeks. So it's going to take a, a monumental effort to get through. It's a lot of work to, to, to double up a class like that. Uh, so understand, it's going to take a supreme effort to get through this class. Uh, instructions will be provided to you each step of the way to help you succeed. Uh, my, my Miramar email is fturner at sdccd.edu. Any questions at any time, let me know. Our class is between October 18th and December 18th. We'll go over the syllabus, class requirements, first day class by video. We're doing that right now. Uh, these videos will be available to you for instruction each week. So essentially, uh, the, the, the key to get from, from the home page is there's four places to find out what's going on. Uh, first is modules, and I'll show that to you in a minute here. Um, simply go to modules section uh, found in the menu on the left side of this page. So where's that? Left side of the page, modules, there it is. Don't worry about that it says blank. I'm still building this. Okay, so it'll all be ready to go when you when you get when you open it yourself. Um, okay, open modules uh, and choose the week we're in, week one, week two, and I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, each week have will have links to the relevant lectures, instructions, and films. But you've also got three other places to go. Okay, course summary, the to-do list, and the calendar. Okay, uh, so course summary is at the bottom of our own page. And what this really is is a chronological list of the important dates of this class. First day of class, instructions for film number one, film reflection one post today. Quiz chapter 16's due, drop deadline, whatever it is, all the way through the uh, last day of class. Okay, so this is a nice kind of quick way for you to, to to see what's going on in the class. Now, in in the student view, so this so you're, what you're looking at right now is an instructor view. So I'm going to click over to student view so you can see what the, what I'm talking about. There's another a a third uh, place to find what's going on, and this is really a a, a great kind of uh, a feature of Canvas, and it's over here on the right, the to-do list. So this is what you'll you see, and uh, at, if it's at the top of the list, that's the most important thing. That's that that item's coming due soon. So at a glance, I would suggest you you know uh, very often open this home page and look at that to see what's going on. Uh, okay, so um, so the to-do list is is really great. The other the other way to find out what's going on in this class is the calendar over here on the on the left side. Click on calendar, and this these are the same calendar dates that the course summary list has that chronological list, but it's in calendar form. Same idea. First day of class, instructions for film one post, quiz chapter 16 is due, drop deadline. Same thing, but in a calendar format. So if you, if you prefer a calendar format, uh, you can do it this way. Okay. Okay, so let's go back to our uh, oops, uh, back to our home page. Oh, wrong button. There you go. Um, okay, so let's go back to my view. Uh, okay, so so that's that's the key to taking the home page. Four places to find what's going on. So there really shouldn't be an excuse about I didn't know this was happening. I didn't know this was coming. Uh, you know, modules, course summary, 
to-do list calendar. It's a lot. It's a lot of places to find out what's going on. Okay. Okay. Next on our on our menus announcements. So um, you know I've already posted a few announcements. I've posted the class early, so I let you know that we had a we had a wrong link for our textbook, so I fixed that. Um, but announcements are here. So understand, if I'm making an announcement, it's important. It's for everybody. It's it, this is one of the ways I can I can communicate with you without a classroom. Uh, I would say always check this. I, I you get probably text alerts or whatever kind of alert you get. If you get an announcement, make sure you read it because it's something for everybody and it's pertinent to the class. The other way I can communicate with you is in the welcome videos each week, and I'll show you what that is here in a minute. That's a typically a you know three to ten minute video depending on what's going on that I will make where I'm talking. You can see me and I'm talking and I'm telling you what's going on, and I'm trying to clarify this, clarify that. So make sure that you check announcements and always watch the welcome video each week in the modules. So that's that's where we're going now. Uh, so open modules, and here you see week one, week two, all the way through week eight. Now that's not the way that you're going to see it. If you open it right now, there's nothing there. I haven't, I haven't uh, published it yet. I, I got to press that little button right there to publish so you can see it. Uh, I haven't built all this yet. I'm still in the midst of doing that while I make this this video. So as week one's published, that will show up. Then week two, then week three. So the first week, all you see, all you see here is, is week one. The eighth week, you'll have week one through eight. Okay. Let's open week one to just and I'm going to show you that and then another random week so you kind of have an idea. Week one is pretty much the same for for all of my classes um, because it's kind of the intro week and it's kind of you know looking at class managing and that type of thing. So this is what a typical module looks like. Okay, it'll always say whatever week it is. It'll give you the date. That's the Monday of that week, the the, the day that the week starts. Welcome to week one. And here I say, listen to each these each week. This is the this is the welcome to week one video. Okay, so that's what I'm talking about. This is one of the ways I can communicate with you. So make sure you always watch these. Uh, then you come through, and it will have what's what's happening this week and in this week week one for all my classes. So your week one will look very close to this. Introductions in class management. Uh, this is from my uh, my class from spring. Uh, we will have two classes per week, like a typical face-to-face -face class. Not in this class, four classes per week, per week because we're double time. But I'm, you know, I'm just showing you the format here. Then we start with class number one, why history is important, how I run a class. So this is just kind of intro stuff. Come down to class two, syllabus and canvas management. I'm recording that right now. Okay, but most importantly, in week one, always for the remainder of the semester. Anytime you have a situation where you don't know what a assignment's about, you can always come here. And, and the, the assignment for week one is for you to listen and read, listen to the video tutorials and read the instructions uh, for all of these. What is a chapter quiz? That's, that's one of our assignments. What is a film reflection? That's one of our assignments. Um, number three, discussion boards we're not going to have in this class, so you don't have to worry about that. That won't be there in the final draft here. But what is the supplemental lecture will be? This is the one that you need to spend more time on. Not because it's complicated, not because it's difficult. It's different. You're writing reviews of, of lectures that I give to you randomly. Okay, your, your essay questions for your midterm and final will come from those. So make sure that you spend extra time with supplemental lectures. If you understand them, they're easy to do. They're not you know overwhelmingly difficult. And most people do very well. Uh, in, in all my classes, more people stumble on here than anywhere else. Just a, just a handful, maybe a little more than a handful, but, but like I said, the, 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 the majority of students do well in my class. Um, it's not designed to wipe you out. It's designed to try to enlighten you about history and see how things happen in the past that relate to us in the present. So please make sure that you look at all of these assignments, um, instructions. And then, of course, we'll, we'll have other you know, notations about what's happening. Uh, so every week's going to look like this. Now this, this, this week one will look the same in all my classes, but let's go to a uh, random module later, later on in the, in the course. Let's go to week four. This is what a typical, you know, week will look like. Again, same thing, date, 
Welcome to week four. There's my welcome video. Make sure you watch those. This week is chapter three, class one. So this is how every chapter works. I, I do a main video lecture, 43 minutes long. In the midst of these videos, I'll stop and say, okay, watch this film. And you come back out to this page. I will say, go ahead and watch the films entitled The Natives and the English. And you come out, watch this film right here. Next is Disease, watch it right there. Just come out and click on it, and there it is, ready to roll, okay? Uh, films, you know, that sometimes I, I have a lot, just depends, sometimes not that many. Uh, but films are a big part of, of how I teach, okay? It, it gives you a break from listening to me, which anybody would prefer uh, to have a break, I mean. And uh, just kind of, you know, mixes it up a little bit. I show lots of images in all my lectures. So, you know, it's kind of a multimedia extravaganza, to say the least. Okay, so class one, class two, in your case, you're going to have class three, class four also, because it's double, double time, okay? That's kind of an overview of the module. So modules is the command center, the brain of our class. This is where you go each week to find out what the instructions are what your assignments are, and what I expect you to accomplish that week, all right? Okay, assignments, I'm going to show you two views. My view first, and you can see them segregated and categorized. So chapter quizzes are for every, every chapter that we have in our book. And in this case, it's 16 through 29, okay? 14 chapters. Every week, I'm sorry, every week you're going to do two to three of these in a fast track class. We also have four film reflections, uh, about one every two weeks. Uh, notice no discussion board. So again, uh, we don't have time in an eight-week class to, to get that in also. So we just we, I just don't do it in an eight-week class. So you're, you're kind of getting a little bit less than what I usually do. <clears throat> and I know, know that that's probably breaking all your hearts. Okay. Also have a midterm uh, and a final exam. Okay. So part one, part two, I mentioned before. Part one is 40 questions, 40 minutes. Part two is three essays, 75 minutes. And midterm and final, exactly the same format. Final has a little bit, a, a few more points, uh, but the same format, just different um, subjects. Okay. So I want to show you the student view of this, so you know what you're getting into, what you're going to see here. So in the student view, assignments come chronologically, not not categorized like mine. So. You have October 24th, chapter 16, the 31st, chapter 17, also the 31st, chapter 18, film reflection one, November 1st. So down the line. So you see them coming. OK, uh, so you're it's it's somewhat like the to do list, but it's only uh, assignments. So you'll you'll see them coming. Always check this so you know what's going on. OK. OK, let's go back out to uh, my view and keep going here. <clears throat> Okay, discussions, as I've said a couple of times, there, there are no discussion assignments, but the discussion board is here. This is an open forum for our class. This is for students. I'm not going to, you know, I, I, will, I will look here on occasion, just kind of glance through it real quick to see if somebody's asking me a question. If you want to ask me a question, it's better to do it by email. But this is for students to communicate in an online class. We don't see each other, but some of you may know each other. Uh, you can talk back and forth. I'm not going to read everything and, and, and pass judgment about what you say, except for except for two, two, two things I might. If there's any bullying going on, I, I'm going to speak up about that. This is not this is not, you know, Instagram or Twitter, or social media where that a lot of that goes on. This is a college campus where we expect, a, you know, professional students to act accordingly. Also, profanity. Don't don't be dropping profanity in here. We this is a public forum, and not everybody appreciates that. Okay, so uh, you know, students that are here are paying money to do this, so they don't need to be, you know, uh, subject to that type of thing. Okay, not everybody appreciates it. Okay, next on our on our list is grades. I'm not going to open that because it'll show everybody's name, and I want just for privacy issues, but. Open that and it'll just show your grades and you can see all the grades that are happening. Of course, any in, any uh, you know grades that you feel are incorrect, let me know right away. People, same thing. You can reach out and message students that are in this class. Uh, all the the whole roster shows up with a way to and you can send messages. So you know you need notes. I lost my book and somebody helped me. Can I borrow? But whatever it is, can you give me a ride to the 
to the dentist, you know, how, whatever it is that you do, um, you can do it two ways, discussion or through people, okay? Uh, now, now all the rest of these you see are, are kind of uh, the, the, the ones that are blanked out. I, I, I don't have, but you'll you'll have access to all the rest here. Uh, Google Drive, Confer Zoom, Studio, Unicheck, all these are available for you for, at, if, if you'd like. Okay. All right. So that is. Let's go back to our home page to make sure that is the home page, and we've gone through all the pertinent uh, links here. And talked about everything. Let's go to our syllabus. So again, I'm not going to go over this word for word. I want to go to sleep tonight, so that will take a little, a, a little while. Well, I don't mean that long, but we don't need to do it like that. Please, I'm going to hit hit it in a synopsis form. I'm going to hit the main points, uh, but please make sure that you read this yourself word for word. Okay. So again, Miramar College History 101, CRN, my name, online class, fast track my email okay office this is important i'll have open office hours each week of the course every wednesday between noon and, and 2 p.m i will post the link for this session each week every wednesday morning in announcements however the link is, is good throughout the entire semester i i only post it to remind students that, that today's the day so any any link from the, the the link from week two we can work in week six okay um if you can't make that time um, you can talk to me privately through Zoom. I can set up a time with you. If you work during that time, uh, let me know, you know, three, four times you're available in the next two, three days. If midnight is, is all you can do, I can make that happen. I'm, I'm here to help you and, and meet with you. So please understand uh, that I'm, I'm open for that. I, got, I have no problem with that. Uh, when you come into, if you come to my open session, Initially, you'll be placed in a waiting room, and then most of us understand this by now. Um, if I don't, if I don't, you know, let you in right away, it's probably because I have a student already in there. It's just like a in the hallway when you want to talk to me, but there's somebody there. You you gotta wait. So same thing. Um, I will try to move it along as fast as I can without cutting anybody short. But at some point, I'll let you in. Okay. Okay. So please read the rest of this regarding uh, all of that with office hours. Um, the, the syllabus is, is might be changed. I'll let you know if that's the case. Okay. Uh, Netiquette policy. Please read this about just proper ways to deal with an online class. Um, as as we've all found found out in the social media world, sometimes we're emotional. We send something, you can't get it back, right? It's out there. So please read this. Uh, class description kind of tells you what we're looking at, what the course is looking at, and so on. Please read that. Um, top to bottom student learning outcomes this is what the uh, what the campus is expecting that me to teach you so at the end of the class you should be able to to uh, have a mastery of uh, each one of these points so please please read that uh, my background is as an instructor and my my field of study is the study of racism and discrimination as well as the history of civil rights and social justice. So my lectures and presentations will be given from this point of view. Not not every you know second of, of the lecture, but that's the theme of all my classes, okay? Textbooks, this is where I, I made a mistake and had the wrong title in here, so I apologize about that, but we fixed that. I fixed that. So here's our textbook, The Earth and Its People, the best way to find this book is is do this. Don't 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 search the title. Don't do that. Do this. Search the ISBN number. That's why I put it real big here for you to see. Copy that. Google that. Boom. You'll have a you know a myriad of places to 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 get this book. Um, please make sure that you get the main textbook. Uh, this this ISBN will bring up three books. If the book says uh, sources or value, you don't want that one. Okay, that is not the book that you want. Uh, we want the book that looks just like this. I'm going to go down here and show you the book. That's what it looks like. If it says sources or value, you don't want that. Brief edition is okay, but not sources or value. Okay. Um, uh, the book is available in the campus bookstore. Our class number CRN is 76625. 
So the book is very expensive in the bookstore, even used. I don't know how they get away with it, but I'm just vehemently against expensive books in the bookstore. It really irritates me. Um, this is why I use books that are a little older, not 10 years, but maybe four or five. Why do I do that? Because it's cheaper for you. It's cheaper for students. A, a student shouldn't have to pay $150 for a, a used book, okay? So I don't upgrade my books to the nearest, newest edition very often because I'm trying to keep the, the uh, expense down for you. Um, all that really means is that the at the especially in this class it doesn't really have much of a of a of a concern in the in the early world history, but this class we do come to the present time, so we'll just fill that in ourselves. Okay, so don't worry about it. you're not going to miss anything by having a little bit older book. You're going to save some money. Uh, but there's ways to find this book that's a whole lot cheaper than the bookstore, and I I know that most of you probably know this by now, but you can rent them at AmazonCheck.com. Go there. Put that ISBN number in and and rent it for uh, you know less than twenty dollars sometimes twenty thirty dollars maybe instead of one hundred and fifty. Uh, you can purchase them on eBay. You know students sell books after they're done with the class. Uh, Fast Track One's just finished, so many students want to off their book. They go to eBay, Half.com, locally on Craigslist is another way to find a local student that wants to sell it. And of course, there's a variety of online sources, Facebook and so on. And you, you probably know more about that than I do. Uh, look at all those opportunities to try to find this book at a reduced cost. Okay, and there's the, there. That's what the book looks like. This is the only textbook required for the entire course. Attendance. Uh, you know, you don't have any classroom here. There's no requirement, but a lack of engagement, especially in the first week, if you don't interact, you could be dropped for that. Uh, add drop responsibility. It's your responsibility to drop the class. So understand what I'm saying here. I am not going to drop you from this class except for in the first week if you don't log in. Uh, after that, you're on your own. Okay. So I've. This is a policy of Miramar, and I, I actually learned this from Miramar, and I've taken this policy to, to the other campuses that I that I teach at. Uh, it just kind of becomes a nightmare to drop somebody and then they, and a student comes back and why'd you drop me? Well, you haven't been here for four weeks. Well, you, so what? So I don't I don't drop anybody anymore. Uh, it's your responsibility to drop yourself. So after the, uh, I'm sorry, there's two drop deadlines. Uh, October 27th, that's 11 days after the class starts. You have a week and a half to figure it out. If you drop the class by that day, there'll be no record on your transcripts. It, it won't even show up. But you have till November 19th, which is around the midterm. So if you're if you're struggling or you're not doing well and you, and you can't see the light at the end of the tunnel and, and you feel like you're not going to improve, get out of the class, drop it. You, you know a W. While you don't want a whole bunch of them, you know you don't want to be transferring to a university and have them look at transcripts with 12 Ws because that's that. What does that say? This person doesn't ever finish what they start. But one or two is not going to hurt you, but it's way better than an F or a D or even a C in some cases, depending on what what campus you want to go to. So be aware of that. Don't you know, sometimes people get an opportunity. You know, you're you're most of you are, are young. You get a job. I'm, I'm going to what a great job. I'm going to go get this job and I'll never come back to school. You just leave it hanging and you get an F. And this is what I did when I was a kid. So when I came back to school as an older person, I, I had a pretty poor grade point average you know I, I dropped and I had every letter you shouldn't have F D's W's uh, incompletes all over the place so when I came back to school and and aced everything and got straight A's I, I didn't get to graduate with honors because my past when I was a kid is also mixed in so your your college career is going to be counted from the time you, if you start at 18 and finish it in your in your 50s like I did it all counts. So understand, you may have a great job. You may think you're never going to come back, but and maybe you won't. But don't burn the bridge. Drop the class. Don't destroy your transcripts that way, okay? Uh, anybody that remains enrolled in the class beyond the deadline will receive a letter grade. So if you, if you bow out in week three and you don't turn anything else in, you're going to get an F in the class. Okay, obviously be prepared, complete the readings, assignments, ask questions, have the needed materials. 
Uh, technology requirements, please read this so you understand what, what's required to be successful in the class. Uh, this is important. Uh, assignments, so here you see the three assignments, no discussion boards. Chapter quizzes, film reflections, supplemental lectures. Again, I'm not going to read this. I want you to, but where you're going to find the details for this is where? Modules, week one, scroll down to assignment instructions, read the written instructions listen to the video tutorials and do them uh, more than once to make sure you know what's going on okay okay midterm and final exam i've already mentioned a couple times part one 40 multiple choice from the book part two is three essay questions from your supplemental lectures all right let's keep going here uh grading is uh 515 15 possible points 140 points for 14 chapter quizzes at 10 points 100 points for four film reflections at 25 points each and the midterm and final exam. I, I grade in a typical percentage uh, method. Uh, please check your points, your grades in Canvas. It's your responsibility to, to, to check them. Any disputes must be brought to my attention immediately. So don't tell me in week eight that you should have got eight points on the week one chapter quiz, but you only got six. Tell me then so you know I, I can deal with it then. Uh, extra credit and late work, so I'm going to read this and, and so you understand this, okay? I don't offer extra credit at all. So before you get like, what's wrong with this guy, hear me out. I grade the final exam using the same point system as the midterm exam, but there are 35 extra points on the final exam. These are a bonus for anyone who completes the class. So if you complete the class, you'll get 35 extra points, okay? Uh, I do not accept any late assignments. So what is wrong with this guy? Now, it comes from past experience. It's, it's, it's a nightmare for me uh, when people just inundate me with late assignments or I'm not doing so well. Can you find me some extra credit? You know, I just I just choose not to do it. So 35 points extra for, for the uh, final exam. With, the, with late assignments, I, I'm giving you a, a extended time. So chapter quizzes are available 10 days before they're due, including two weekends, okay? That's, a, that's more than enough time to, to do a 10-question quiz, open book. It, it, it shouldn't take you that long. Film reflections are available 11 days before they're due. They're, they're due on Mondays, chapter quizzes on Sundays. So same thing, two weekends to watch a, you know, a film that's an hour to two hours long and write a three-page paper. Actually, it's only a uh, just a little over two-page paper. The only exceptions to this in a fast-track class are the first and last weeks due to our compressed schedule. So be aware of the schedule. Uh, the first week, uh, our first week, the uh, the uh, chapter quiz will post on our first day Monday. I can't post it before the class starts, so it's it's due that following Sunday, where typically it's Friday to Sunday. Okay. Okay, um, so that's that's kind of my my policy about about these these two uh, two items: extra credit, late assignments. Okay, um, so I'm just going to give you some advice, and you can take it how you want to take it. Uh, maybe it's just an old guy preaching, but you know, I've I've learned a lot in my in my life. I I was the worst student on the planet way back in my in my day out of high school, and like I said before, I did very very well as an older person, and here I am. Uh, so, so what, what did I do different? Well, you know, and this happens to students every semester where it's 10 to 12, it's, it's due at midnight and my internet went down or my, you know, something happened. Well, you know, I've given you all these days, so it's kind of, it's kind of a, not a great excuse. Um, I understand emergencies, but that's why you should do it early in, in, in your class, in all your classes, in your life. Just take my advice here. I've learned this. I've learned this the hard way, and it's done. I've done well with it. Do the hard stuff first Monday. Just do the hard stuff. Get it out of the way. What's what's the most challenging assignment in all your classes? Do that first, and then go down from there. What's the next challenging, next challenging, next challenging, until it gets easier. So you start hard on Monday. It gets easier by Wednesday, Thursday. Friday, you're done. Take a three-day weekend. Start it again Monday. That's that's the way that I live my life, and I'm I'm successful, and I'm uh, able to get through and manage all the things that I do. So that's just my my um, kind of 
advice to you, take it or leave it. No excuse to not finish an assignment in this time frame. Again, start early, finish early. Uh, late assignments of any type will not be accepted. No exceptions. Okay. Uh, so read all this, please. Student responsibility, student code of conduct. Please read this. Student success. Uh, all of this is great information. Please go through this. Read this more than once. Uh, conflict resolution. I will talk about if there's a if you feel there's a problem with your grades or or other matters that pertain to me or the class. Uh, please follow these steps. Uh, talk to me first. I won't take it personally. If you're angry about something, you know, it happens on occasion. Uh, talk to me first to attempt to remedy the issue. So in my in my years of teaching, I've never had anybody yet go to step two. We've always managed to work it out. I'm, I'm pretty easy to get along with, and I'm usually on your side. So, uh, you know, that doesn't happen. It hasn't happened yet. But if it does, if, if my... If my attempt to, to remedy the issue doesn't work for you, you then go to the next step. And I will give you the department chair's information very happily here. Talk to him. You contact him. Talk to him. If he doesn't, doesn't satisfy you, then you go to the next step, and he will give you that information. You go to the dean of the department. That's the top of the food chain. So if you've been in the military, you, you know about the chain of command. You know, if the, if the latrine in the, in the barracks is broken, you don't go to the commanding officer and tell him that. You tell your sergeant, and then he goes up the line from there. Same thing here, okay? Okay. Um, uh, academic honesty and this word called plagiarism that everybody talks about, but I'm not sure anybody knows what the heck it is. So, of course, you're expected to be honest, ethical at all times. In this course, cheating, plagiarism, disruptions of instructional activity, fraud, lying, using somebody else's paper, you know, from a semester ago. This happens to me on occasion. You know, when, when you submit through Canvas, there's a system called Unicheck. Unicheck scans the entire Internet for similar papers. So on occasion, I get a paper from a student from last semester that's a friend of yours, and, and, and you submit it. You, you can get caught doing that very easily. Cutting and pasting information from websites, you get caught very easily. Not that often, but in a semester of four, five, six classes that I have, it'll happen five or six times. Uh, so don't don't be that person. If you're caught doing that, you will get a zero for that assignment with no makeup at all. Okay. Uh, but understand if if it's a, if it's a serious infraction, if it goes beyond that, if it, if it's some kind of you know cheating ring with with four or five students, and and it happens. You can get an F in the entire course and, and dropped with an F uh, with no recourse. And, it, and possibly formal, formal disciplinary action with the Dean of Student Affairs. And possibly even expelled if it's really bad. So, so don't be that person. You're nothing in this class is difficult. I, I, I know some of it's kind of monotonous, um, but, but I try to make it, I try to liven it up with images and films. So understand what I'm trying to do. I'm, I'm not only trying to teach you this class because that's what my job is, but I'm also trying to enlighten you about history and how it's important to the present and how the things that we all all have vehement attitudes about today started in the past. To, to properly understand today, you have to understand the past, okay? So um, that that's that's what I'm that's what I'm trying to do here, okay? So don't don't be one of these people that try to try to cheat and find a a way around it okay uh, so it's my it's my responsibility to report all incidents of student dishonesty to the, to the office of the Dean of Students now I'm not going to contact uh, that person um, you know if it's just a simple cut and paste I don't typically do that but if it's worse than that I have to kind of keep my job okay so I don't want to lose my job so please don't don't go down that road mm -hmm. uh, please read the rest of this uh, academic accommodations, uh, uh, students with disabilities that require accommodations. Um, I don't, I don't have the you know, authority to, to, to do that. So don't come to me. Go to the DSPS services uh, at Miramar, and then they will interview you and talk to you, and they will then come up with accommodations for you, whatever it might be, extended time on an exam, note taker, whatever it might be. You then send your accommodations letter to me by email. 
I, you know, uh, respond, I, I will sign that, and send it back to you, I'll scan it, send it back to you, and then you have those accommodations. So please read this if, if that's of interest to you. Uh, and um, I'm sorry, the DSPS department, uh, you can find online uh, on, on the website. Just, I don't, there should be a, oh, there it is, right here. So, so here, here's the, here's the uh, DSPS website, okay? Just click on that and you'll have all the information you need, mm -hmm. okay? Okay, uh, so again, before we wrap this up, it's your responsibility to drop this class before the drop deadlines if you are unable to finish the course. If you don't, a grade will be assigned to every student who remains in the class roster after the drop deadline. So don't, I'm, I'm, I'm repeating myself, I'm reiterating, please understand this, don't get an F in this class because you stopped coming. Okay, to wrap it up, a commentary, so a little bit more preaching for me, uh, just some more stuff to um, hopefully advice from a person that's been down the road a few times, been around the block more than 20 times. In, in a face-to-face -face class, on occasion, my first lecture, okay, here we go. Someone will raise their hand and say, how much of your lecture or presentation is actually on an exam? And the first time that happened, I, I was almost a little insulted, like, what? How can I how can I ask that question? I, I mean, I, and and why would I? I mean, what am I supposed to do? Okay, this is this is on the exam for five minutes, but this is not. I mean, come on. If you, if you look at a typical course, our course, eight weeks in our course, if you take out the days used for the midterms and final, that's reduced to approximately let's let's say seven seven weeks of instruction, maybe so six hours. Um, if we multiply, I'm sorry, if we multiply seven by six hours of instruction per week, that's 42 hours of instruction. So how do I, how do I fit three hours of, of, how do I fit, you know, all those hours, 42 hours into, into three hours or four or five hours of midterm and final? I mean, I, I, I can't, there's, there's no way. So it becomes pretty obvious that, that getting everything I say to you into an exam is impossible, but students still ask me. Well, what you're about to talk about beyond exam. So it's difficult to answer that question. Pretty obviously, uh, much of what I say will not be on an exam. Uh, so from my perspective, and, you know, again, this is from, from, you know, rolling down the hill many times, learning the hard way. The best approach for students is to take it all in, learn all you can from, from these lectures, from, from these assignments. If you approach it that way, you won't have to worry about the exams. You'll know all there is to know. I, I don't I don't give complicated trick question exams. Uh, so this course is designed by me to teach you the story of the United States of America. Now that's uh, that's that, that that should say modern world history, right? So that's a mistake right there. I'll fix that. The best approach for you to take is to learn it well, as it will help you discover that many of the issues and conflicts we have today had their beginnings in the past. Whether it's American history or world history, same thing. History is an extremely relevant subject regarding the present. Uh, the best approach to your education is not to figure out an easy way, look for shortcuts, and we talked about that a little bit, but embrace it. Let it, let it do its magic. So again, it sounds kind of lame, but trust me, I've been on both sides. I hated everything about it, but I kept on going and getting F's and D's. And then I came back and embraced it, and it opened up my, my entire life, enlightened me, took off the blinders that, that I was wearing. And maybe you're doing the same thing. So, you know, open up to it, all your classes. The combination of all your classes together is designed to enlighten you and remove any blinders you may be wearing regarding life. If you allow this to happen and work as hard as you can, I can assure you that the benefits gained will be invaluable and priceless for the rest of your life. I am living proof. Essentially, high school's adult training, it teaches you the very basics so you can maneuver through society without any obstacles, but college will allow you to pursue careers that require higher knowledge. Uh, this will, re will result in having a career that's satisfying, living a, a life that's full, challenging, rewarding. But again, most importantly, it will result in a life that is satisfying. Satis satisfaction in life, not money, not anything else, not status, not anything like that. What's what's the key ingredient to happiness is being satisfied in life, okay? Okay, and that's the end, our last statement here. If you think education is expensive, try ignorance, okay? 
Okay, that's the end of our tutorial. Thank you.